I remember my childhood as a time of contrasts. While most kids complained about their parents working too much, I had to listen to my mom's daily litany about how she hated her job. Every evening was the same, she'd come home from the accounting firm, throw her bag on the kitchen counter, and start venting. Amanda, you won't believe what my boss said today, she'd begin, barely taking off her coat. He had the nerve to question my quarterly reports. Me, I've been doing this job for 15 years. I was only 10 at the time, but even then, I could see how different my parents were. Dad, who managed a retail chain, would just shake his head and keep eating his dinner. He was always the practical one. Sarah, he'd say to mom, using his calm voice that somehow made her even more agitated, if you hate it so much, find another job. Another job? She'd scoff. I don't want another job, Mark. I want no job. I want to be home, living the life I deserve. Dad would usually chuckle at this point, which never failed to send mom into a fresh spiral of complaints. You think it's funny? You think it's amusing that your wife is miserable? I learned to tune out these conversations, focusing instead on whatever book I was reading or homework I had to finish. But everything changed when we got that call about Uncle Jerry. I still remember that evening clearly. Dad was unusually quiet during dinner, and Mom was going through her usual routine of complaints when he finally interrupted her. Jerry died, he said simply, putting down his fork. Mom stopped mid-sentence. Your Uncle Jerry? Was there, I mean, did he leave anything? Dad sighed heavily. He left his estate to his nephews. I'm one of them. Mom's fork clattered against her plate. How much? $200,000. The silence that followed was deafening. I watched my mother's face transform, the perpetual frown lines smoothed out, her eyes widened, and a smile I'd never seen before spread across her face. Mark, she whispered, reaching across the table to grab his hand, do you know what this means? We could buy that vacation house I've been talking about, or... No, Dad cut her off firmly. Remember all those times you said you wanted to be free? Well, here's our chance. I'm going to start my own business. A business? Mom's voice rose an octave. But Mark. A courier company, he continued as if she hadn't spoken. I've been researching it for years. With this capital, we could make it work. You could quit your job and help me run it. We'd be our own bosses. Mom's face went through a series of expressions, disappointment, calculation, and finally, resignation mixed with hope. Fine, she said eventually. But I get to be the accountant. And when we start making money, I want nice things, Mark. Real nice things. Dad smiled and squeezed her hand. Deal. The first three years were tough. Dad worked crazy hours getting his courier company off the ground, while mom handled the books. I spent a lot of time at the office after school, watching them build something from nothing. Despite the long hours, there was an energy in the air, a sense of possibility that made even the difficult days feel worthwhile. Then, almost exactly three years in, everything changed. The business started turning real profit, and suddenly we were living a completely different life. We moved from our modest house to a fancy new place in the expensive part of town. Dad bought two Mercedes for himself and mom. But the biggest change wasn't in our surroundings, it was in my mother. I'm done, she announced one morning over breakfast. Mark, I'm quitting the company. I don't want to work anymore. Dad just nodded, like he'd been expecting this. Okay, honey. We can hire another accountant. I nearly choked on my cereal. Just like that? Just like that, mom smiled, already scrolling through her phone. Oh look, Melissa just got back from Paris. I should call her. Melissa was one of mom's new friends, all wealthy businesswomen who spent their days shopping and planning their next vacation. Her old friends, the ones who'd been around when we were normal, started disappearing from her life one by one. While mom was reinventing herself, I started spending more time with dad at the office. I tried to learn about the business, thinking maybe I'd take over someday, 
but my heart wasn't in it. Dad, I said one afternoon, watching him review delivery routes, what if I told you I don't want to run the company when I grow up? I think I want to be a dentist. Instead of looking disappointed, his face lit up. Really? Tell me more about that. So I did. I told him about the biology classes I loved, about how fascinating I found dental procedures, about my dream of having my own practice someday. He listened to everything, asking questions, and showing genuine interest. Meanwhile, mom was barely home anymore. She was always off somewhere, Aspen, Cabo, the Maldives, with her new friends. I lost count of how many times I asked to go with her. Mom, can I come on your trip to Europe next month? I asked one day, watching her pack another new suitcase. She didn't even look up. Oh honey, no. These trips are my time to get away from, well, everything. When you're older, you'll realize how exhausting family life can be. I wanted to point out that she didn't actually participate in family life anymore, she was too busy recovering from it. But I just walked away. What was the point? The mother who used to help me with homework and make chocolate chip pancakes on Sundays was gone, replaced by this stranger who cared more about her designer handbags than her daughter. High school graduation came and went, and before I knew it, I was packing my bags for dental school in another state. Dad helped me move into my dorm, setting up my room with the same careful attention he gave to everything in his life. Mom didn't come to help me move in. She was in the Bahamas with her friends, celebrating someone's new yacht. Every Sunday at 7 p.m., I'd call home. Dad would appear on screen immediately, eager to hear about my classes, my friends, my life. He'd lean in close to the camera, hanging on every word about dental procedures and anatomy lessons. Mom, when she bothered to join the calls, would hover in the background, usually scrolling through her phone. It became our routine. Sometimes mom wouldn't show up at all, and those were actually my favorite calls, just dad and me, talking about everything and nothing. Then came the call that changed everything. Amanda, dad's voice was different that Sunday. I need to tell you something. I knew from his tone that whatever was coming wasn't good. But nothing could have prepared me for what he said next. It's cancer. And it's, it's aggressive. The world tilted on its axis. What? No, that's impossible. You're healthy, you. Six months, maybe less, he cut me off gently. I'm selling the company. Neither you nor your mother could run it, and I want everything settled before. He couldn't finish the sentence. He didn't need to. Those six months were a blur. I tried to split my time between school and home, watching helplessly as my father, my rock, my best friend, withered away before my eyes. He sold the company quickly, thank God, so at least he didn't have to worry about that in his final weeks. Mom fluttered around during his illness, playing the part of the devoted wife whenever anyone was watching. But I caught the calculating look she'd give his medication schedule, the way she'd check his business papers when she thought no one was looking. A month after selling the company, Dad slipped away quietly in his sleep. I was holding his hand when it happened. Mom was at a spa. The funeral was a production worthy of Broadway. Mom sobbed dramatically, clutching at the arms of her friends, barely able to stand. She looked the perfect picture of a grieving widow in her designer black dress and tastefully subtle makeup. But the moment the last guest left, it was like someone had flipped a switch. She straightened up, wiped her eyes, and walked to the mirror to fix her mascara. Well, she said, suddenly businesslike, that's done. Now we need to talk about the money. I stared at her, unable to process the transformation. Mom, Dad just died. I know, honey, and it's terrible, she said, not sounding terrible at all. But life goes on. And just think what we could do with the money from the company sale. I've had my eye on this gorgeous villa in Spain. Then there was the reading of the will. The notary's office was cold and sterile, nothing like Dad's warm presence. Mom sat next to me in a black designer dress, different from the funeral one, of course, tapping her manicured nails against her leather handbag. Mr. Peterson, Dad's longtime lawyer and friend, 
cleared his throat and began reading. Being of sound mind, his voice droned on with the legal preliminaries until he got to the meat of it. The family house is to be divided equally between my wife, Sarah Thompson, and my daughter, Amanda Thompson. Mom's tapping stopped. Furthermore, I have established a trust fund for Amanda's continued education in dentistry, covering all expenses until the completion of her degree. I could feel Mom's tension building beside me. The remaining assets, including proceeds from the sale of the business, are to be divided as follows, 60% to my daughter, Amanda Thompson, and 40% to my wife, Sarah Thompson. The tapping resumed, faster now, almost violent. This is ridiculous, Mom burst out before Mr. Peterson could continue. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake, Mrs. Thompson, Mr. Peterson said quietly. Mark was very clear about his wishes. Mom turned to me, her face a mask of calculated sympathy. Amanda, honey, you have to see how unfair this is. Your education is already being paid for, and you'll make plenty of money once you're a dentist. I'm your mother, I need this money to maintain my lifestyle. Maybe try spending less? The words came out before I could stop them. Her face transformed instantly, the sympathetic mask dropping away to reveal raw fury. How dare you? After everything I've sacrificed for you? What exactly have you sacrificed, Mom? You haven't worked in years. You've been on permanent vacation while Dad built everything we have. I don't have to listen to this. She stood up, gathering her designer purse and jacket. When you decide to stop being selfish and ungrateful, you know where to find me. The door slammed behind her with enough force to rattle the diplomas on Mr. Peterson's wall. Your father knew this might happen, Mr. Peterson said gently. He wanted to make sure you were taken care of. Days turned into weeks. No calls, no texts, no emails. The silence was deafening, but also strangely peaceful. I threw myself into my studies, trying to make Dad proud, trying not to think about Mom's reaction or what it said about her, about us. She'll get over it, I told myself as I reviewed dental anatomy charts late at night. She'll calm down eventually. But deep down, I knew something had broken in that notary's office, something that had been cracking for years. And unlike the broken bones and damaged teeth I was learning to fix in school, this wasn't something that could be mended with study or skill or science. One day I was taking a study break, mindlessly scrolling through social media, when I saw it. At first, my brain couldn't process what I was looking at, mom, tanned and glowing, wrapped in the arms of a man who couldn't be more than 35. The caption beneath the photo stopped my heart, finally married to my soulmate. Newlyweds, love wins. My phone slipped from my numb fingers. Married? Without telling me? I tried calling her immediately, my hands shaking so badly I could barely hit the right numbers. Straight to voicemail, of course. That night, I couldn't sleep. The image of them together kept playing in my head, along with a thousand questions. By morning, I'd made up my mind. I packed a small bag and caught the first flight home. The house looked exactly the same as when I'd left it after the funeral, Dad's rosebushes still perfectly trimmed, his favorite chair visible through the living room window. The only difference was the shiny red Porsche in the driveway that definitely hadn't been there before. Mom opened the door wearing a silk robe I'd never seen before. Her surprised expression quickly turned to anger. Amanda, what are you doing here? Her voice was ice cold. I saw your post, I managed to say. You got married? No one invited you here, she snapped, but before she could close the door, a man appeared behind her, the one from the photo. Up close, he looked even younger. Babe, who is it, he asked, wrapping an arm around her waist. Nobody important, mom replied. Just my daughter who doesn't know how to call before showing up. I felt like I'd been slapped. Your daughter who didn't even know you got married? My personal life is none of your business, she said, lifting her chin defiantly. None of my, mom, dad's only been gone three months. She laughed then, a harsh sound that held no humor. Oh, sweetie, Brad and I have known each other for years. 
Why do you think I took all those solo vacations? Those trips were boring. Brad made them very interesting, didn't you, darling? He smirked, pulling her closer. I felt sick. How could you do this to dad? My voice was barely a whisper. Your father was boring, she shot back. Always work, work, work. Brad knows how to have fun. Now, I suggest you leave before I call the police. This is my house now, and you're not welcome here. This is half my house, I reminded her. Dad left it to both of us. Get out, she screamed, her composed facade cracking. Get out of my house. Go back to your precious studies and your perfect little life that your father bought you. I backed away, tears blurring my vision. The last thing I saw before the door slammed was Brad pulling mom into a kiss, both of them laughing. I made it to my rental car before the sobs came. All those trips, all those times she said she needed breaks, from the family. How long had she been living this double life? How long had she been betraying dad, betraying all of us? Another month has passed. I was in the middle of a dental anatomy class when my phone buzzed. Mrs. Jenkins, our old neighbor who lived next door for 15 years, was calling. Odd, she never called. Amanda, honey, her voice was hesitant. I thought you should know, there are moving trucks at your house. Your mother is selling it. The words didn't make sense at first. That's impossible, the house is half mine. Well, there's a sold sign in the yard, and they're clearing everything out. My hands were shaking as I dialed mom's number, expecting the usual silence. To my surprise, she answered on the first ring. Well, well, if it isn't my studious daughter. Her voice dripped with sarcasm. Mom, what's this about selling the house? She laughed, a sound that sent chills down my spine. Oh, that. Yes, Brad and I got a fantastic price for it. We're moving to Mexico, the weather's so much better there. You can't sell the house, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. It's half mine. Dad left it to both of us. Funny thing about that, she said, sounding almost gleeful. It turns out it's pretty easy to forge a signature. Just a few practice runs, and voila. The house is sold. The world tilted sideways. You, you forged my signature? Mom, that's fraud. That's a crime. Oh please, she scoffed. If you hadn't been so selfish with your father's money, I wouldn't have had to do this. Brad and I deserve to enjoy life. Speaking of which, I just bought him the most gorgeous Jaguar. He's so happy with it. He's happy with your money, Mom. That's all he cares about. You little brat, she spat. You're just jealous, because I have a gorgeous young husband who adores me, while you're all alone with your boring books and your little dental tools. What do you know about love? I know dad loved you, I said quietly. He loved you for 30 years, and this is how you repay him? Your father? She laughed again, harsher this time. Your precious father, who left you more money than me. Who treated me like I was some kind of trophy wife? Well, now I have a real trophy, a young, handsome husband who knows how to have fun. And guess what? We don't care about your American laws in Mexico. We don't care about you, or your inheritance, or anything else. We're going to live the life I deserve. Mom, please. Face it, Amanda. You're just a sad, lonely little girl who's jealous of her mother's happiness. When was the last time you even had a date? Too busy playing with teeth to have a real life, aren't you? Before I could respond, the line went dead. I sat there in the empty classroom, my phone still pressed to my ear, listening to the silence. My mother had just admitted to committing fraud. She had stolen my inheritance, my home, everything I had left of dad. And she was proud of it. Life has a funny way of moving forward, with or without you. In the years following mom's disappearance to Mexico, I finished dental school, completed my residency, and started working at a respected clinic. Dad's inheritance helped me buy a beautiful apartment in a quiet neighborhood, and I was building the life I'd always dreamed of. 
I thought about mom sometimes, usually late at night when I couldn't sleep. I wondered if she was happy with her choices, if her young husband was worth destroying her family for. But mostly, I tried not to think about her at all. Then one ordinary Tuesday evening, as I was unwinding after a long day at the clinic, my doorbell rang. I wasn't prepared for what I saw through the peephole. There stood my mother, but not the perfectly coiffed, designer-clad woman I remembered. This woman was haggard, wearing wrinkled clothes that had seen better days. Her once immaculate hair was graying at the roots, and her expensive makeup was nowhere to be seen. Against my better judgment, I opened the door. Amanda, she whispered, her eyes filling with tears. Baby, please. What are you doing here? My voice came out harder than I expected. She pushed past me into the apartment, her eyes darting around desperately. I need your help, Brad, he, she choked back a sob. He took everything. Everything? I couldn't help the hint of satisfaction in my voice. All the money, the house money, what was left of the inheritance. He spent it all on gambling and parties in Mexico. And then. She wrapped her arms around herself. Then he met some twenty-year-old at a club. They ran off together. Took the Jaguar, took what little money was left. I stood there, watching her cry, feeling nothing but satisfaction. I used my last dollars to fly back here, she continued. Amanda, I know I made mistakes, but I'm your mother. Let me stay here with you, please. A laugh bubbled up from somewhere deep inside me, surprising us both. Stay here? With me? Why are you laughing? her face darkened. This isn't funny. I have nowhere else to go. Maybe you should have thought about that before you forged my signature and stole my house, I said, my laughter dying away. I was wrong, she wailed, falling onto my couch. I know that now. I'm sorry. Please, Amanda, I'm your mother. No, I said quietly. You stopped being my mother the day dad died. Maybe even before that. I want you to leave. She shot to her feet, tears instantly replaced by rage. You ungrateful little bitch. After everything I've done for you. Everything you've done to me, I corrected. Now get out. You can't do this to me, she screamed, mascara running down her cheeks. I'll tell everyone what a horrible daughter you are. I'll tell them how you left your poor mother homeless. What will your fancy doctor friends think about that? As my mother's threats echoed through my apartment, I calmly pulled out my phone. Sometimes the best weapons aren't weapons at all, they're just the truth, preserved at the right moment. Before you continue with your threats, I said quietly, there's something you should hear. I pressed play, and her own voice filled the room, younger, more confident, dripping with that familiar mockery from years ago. Oh please, if you hadn't been so selfish with your father's money, I wouldn't have had to do this. It turns out it's pretty easy to forge a signature. Just a few practice runs, and voila. The house is sold. The color drained from my mother's face as she listened to her past self confess to fraud. Her legs gave out, and she sank back onto my couch. You, you recorded that call? Dad taught me to always be prepared, I said, stopping the playback. He also taught me about consequences, something you never seem to understand. You wouldn't, she whispered, but the uncertainty in her voice was clear. Wouldn't I? Fraud is a federal crime, mom. Forging documents for financial gain? That's years in prison. I'm sure the police would be very interested in this recording. She stared at me, and for the first time, I saw real fear in her eyes. Not manipulation, not calculation, genuine fear. I'll leave, she said quickly. I'll go. Just, don't. Don't what? Turn you in? Like you were just threatening to turn everyone against me? I leaned closer. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to walk out that door, and you're never going to contact me again. No calls, no visits, no messages through friends. If I ever hear from you again, this recording goes straight to the FBI. She stood on shaky legs, clutching her worn purse to her chest. At the door, she turned back one last time. Amanda, 
I'm still your mother. No, I said softly. You're just a woman who gave birth to me. My mother died a long time ago, probably around the time she started cheating on my father at those resorts. She flinched as if I'd slapped her, then hurried out the door. I stood there for a long time after she left, listening to the silence of my apartment. Then I walked to my bedroom and pulled out an old photo album, one of the few things I'd managed to save before she sold the house. There was a picture of us from when I was little, mom, dad, and me at the beach, all smiling, all happy. I touched dad's face gently. I miss you, I whispered. Then I closed the album and put it away. I don't know what happened to my mother after that day. I don't know if she found somewhere to live, if she ever rebuilt her life, if she ever truly regretted what she'd done. Sometimes people ask about her, and I simply say we're not in touch. The truth is, I don't want to know. The woman in that photo album, the mother who once loved me, is gone. The stranger who showed up at my door that day? She's not my problem anymore.